Hey there, I'm Brian Goulet of GouletPens.com, and I've handled a lot of Lamy pens over the years. One of the most unique ones has been the retractable nib Dialog 3 fountain pen, and relatively recently, the Dialog CC followed this one up. And I think because now there's a little more attention around the Lamy retractable nib pens, probably warrants its own video on how to fill these pens because they are just a little bit different than the other cartridge converter pens. Now, both of the pens, the Dialog 3 and the Dialog CC, essentially work the same way. They have a split in the body right here in the middle. And as you twist it clockwise, it extends the nib out from the front. And when you turn it counterclockwise, then it retracts the nib back in. It's got a little trap door in here that keeps it all nice and sealed. It's a pretty cool design, but it does not fill the same way as most other fountain pens. Most other fountain pens you are filling with the whole body intact, but this pen, very similar to the Pilot Vanishing Point and the Vanishing Point Decimo, as well as the Platinum Curados, it has a whole enclosed nib unit inside the pen that you need to remove when you go to fill it. So the way that you do that, is you unscrew the pen in a counterclockwise motion and that will actually separate the pen right here in the middle and it will allow you to access the nib unit inside. So this is actually held in place, a little bit different if you're familiar with the vanishing point, that one's just held in place by a spring and it's loose in there. The dialogues, they uh, screw into the actual body. So you just grab this knurled part right here and that allows you to unscrew it and you have the whole nib unit right there. When you're pulling it out, you wanna make sure that you're not you know, going too far astray one side or the other. You don't wanna be scraping the nib along the sides of the thing. So just try and keep it pretty straight as you're going in, threading it in and out. It's pretty easy to access it, but you're not gonna use any part of the body when you're going to fill the pen because if you try to do that, you're gonna get ink all up in this trapdoor mechanism. It's gonna make a huge mess and then it's gonna be difficult to clean out. So really all you're working with is the inside nib unit when you're filling the pen. And it acts basically like any other fountain pen. It's got your nib and the feed here at the front, the hole right here at the base of the feed where it meets this metal housing, that is actually your filler hole. So when you put it into the ink, you need to get it up past that hole. And then you've got your converter, which seats into the shroud right here. And it does have a cutout window right here, which is really nice because it allows you to see the ink as you're filling the pen. It doesn't allow you to actually see the level of ink when the pen is completely assembled because the pen has a solid body, but it at least allows you some access so you can see that you're actually filling your nib unit in the filling process. Now the converter that comes with the Dialogs, this is the Z27, um, you know, not an unpopular converter, but it's not usually the default. The one that you probably are more familiar with, or maybe you have some if you have any Lamy pens, is the Z28, which is this one with red trimmings, and it's got these little posts, which allow it to fit snugly onto pens like the Safari or the All Star, which are you know Lamy's more popular pens because of their low price point. Well, the higher end pens usually come with a Z27, and that's because on this shroud, especially on the Dialog, you have those posts, they're gonna get in the way and it's not gonna allow it to fit in there properly. So you have the Z27. Now the Z27, you can actually fit onto any cartridge converter Lamy pen, but you need to have it on the Dialog or the Dialog CC. The Z28 won't work. Now when it comes to actually filling it, it's a relatively straightforward process. It feels like any other pen. I'm gonna insert this into the ink and then I'm gonna fill the piston just like I would any other pen. So my ink of choice that I have today, I got some Lamy Crystal Topaz. So this is the brown ink. I thought brown and navy blue would be kind of a nice match. Uh, so that's what we're gonna go with today because Lamy Crystal actually doesn't have a dark blue ink. So went with brown. So filling the pen, very straightforward. Got my ink here. Let's just go ahead and open it up. Set my cap aside. I wanna set my piston all the way down on the converter. And then I wanna insert the nib all the way so that the filler hole is completely submerged. And that's really all I need to go is that far down. You go any further, you're not really buying yourself anything. And then I just kind of very slowly move the piston up. And uh, I've got the ink, it's probably about three quarters full. So I can actually let it down again and that will get most of the air bubble out of there and then 
I'll get it back up. And then I'm pretty much got a full filling just with those two actions right there. Now, you know, it's optional if you want to just drop a, a little drip or two out of there. You don't really need to with the Lamy pens. Usually pens that have external fins on the feed, it's good to let a drop or two out just so that the feed's not totally saturated. But with this Lamy pen, you know, the feeds are, the, the fins are mostly internal on this one. So I find that you don't necessarily have to, you know, drop the ink down out of that, but that's totally up to you. Uh, and then I just use a paper towel or you can use a napkin or tissue or whatever you have handy and just kind of wipe the excess ink off of that housing. Now, this is all going to be hidden anyway. So as long as you get the extra ink off of there, you don't have to get super, super clean with that uh, because it's, you know, it's all going to be hidden. All you're going to see is the nib itself. Now, when it comes time to put it back in here, uh, it doesn't necessarily matter which orientation it's in. So if you have a pen like the Curados or like the Vanishing Point, you have to put it in a certain orientation because it's gonna, you know, fit in with these either pins or, you know, little, uh, you know, slots that it has to align to. Well, this one doesn't do that because it threads in there. So really you can just put it in any orientation. You just gotta make sure that it's in there straight, that you're not scraping the nib along the side of the inside of the pen. And then you screw it in place on this knurled side. I wouldn't grab it by the converter because you might not, you know, you might just be spinning the converter. You won't get the nib unit itself in there. And you just get it until it's really finger snug. You don't want to ratchet it down all the way. I mean, you just want to get it in there uh, so that you have you know positive contact. And then you take the back of the pen and you screw that in place. I like to do this pretty slow, just because if I go really fast, I could end up then moving the nib unit out. And uh, I don't know, or if you cross thread it or something, could have a problem. I guess you can go whatever speed you want. It doesn't really matter too much. And then. The, the last step is if you go really, really gentle until it comes out like that, then it could be that when you go to un or retract the nib, then it could come undone. So what I like to do when I am putting the body back onto it for the, you know, right after filling is I have it out all the way and then I just give it a little bit extra, little bit extra pressure. I mean, it's not rotating hardly at all, but just to get it kind of finger tight there, that way as I'm screwing and unscrewing the pen, I don't have the back of the, body unscrewing unless I want it to next time I need to unfill it. But just in regular use, if I just make it a little bit tighter, then it should be able to last uh, just in normal operation. All right, so I've got my Topaz all inked up here. This is the 14 karat Lamy nib. Now this is slightly different than the Lamy 2000 nib. That nib is actually pretty stiff. This one's very bouncy though, very smooth. I like the way it writes a lot. Um, I have a fine nib on this one and um, yeah flows very nicely. Same nib on the CC as uh, the Dialog 3. So this is the 14 karat fine. And this nib has a little bit of bounce to it. It's one of the bouncier nibs that are out there. So uh, I'm not going to say you get a lot of line variation necessarily. It's not like a flex nib or anything like that, but it's it's got a little bit of softness to it, just a tiny bit, just enough so that if you're writing with a little bit of pressure, especially on your downstrokes, uh, it'll actually put out a slightly thicker line, slightly more ink. So it'll look a little bit darker. Uh, so a nice saturated ink like you have with the uh, Lamy Crystal here, you'll get um, you know a good color variation, even with the same ink as you're writing with different amounts of pressure. Now, the one thing about the dialog pens is they tend to, you know, need to be written with on a somewhat regular basis every day or every couple of days. If you're inking up the pen and you're letting it sit there for a while, you know, it could tend to dry out because the mechanism in here is pretty complex, maybe not as airtight as it would be if it was a simple, you know, capped pen. So that's the one thing to just kind of be aware of, but not a huge deal. You can dip it back in the ink. You can get a little water on it or just kind of try to use it regularly and let a little ink down from the converter if you want to. But, you know, that is something we hear about a little bit. But as you see, there's nothing too intimidating about these uh, dialog pens. It's a fills just like any other cartridge converter pen. It's just got a couple extra steps in there because of this unique nib unit. All right, a little bonus tip in here. This isn't really related to filling the pen, but, uh, you know, it's something that I don't think many people realize is a feature of feature, I guess, but a little bonus thing. I don't even know how to explain it, but it's something that comes with the Dialog pens, the Dialog 3 and the CC specifically, that uh, you don't see on any other pen. So I thought I'd explain it. So I have a Dialog 3 here 
uh, that's in the box. And it's got this little tab that if you lift up the pen and the little platform that's sitting on, it kind of reveals this like secret compartment under here. And that's where you have your spare converter, which you may or may not care about. Uh, but it's also got this little, I don't know, this little nubbin as Drew likes to call it. Uh, but it's technically called the cleaning shell in the Lamy documentation. Uh, and the way that the cleaning shell works is this little knurled metal piece with a thread on the inside. And what this little doodad is meant to do is when you are unscrewing your pen and you are removing your nib unit, this cleaning shell threads onto the front section of the pen and it allows you to be able to open and close that little trap door without having the back of the pen attached. Now, basically it's just an assistant for cleaning. You technically don't really have to use it because you could just put the back of the pen on and you could operate it that way, but then you don't have any light coming through and it's just a little harder to see on the inside. So I guess they just added it as a little bonus feature. So it makes it easier to clean the front section of your pen uh, and you know, a little better visibility in there. So kind of a neat little feature. Sometimes we get questions about what the heck is this little thing in the back of the pen. And uh, well, now you know, it's a cleaning shell. But hopefully this video has been able to help clear things up for you about the dialogue. If you have any questions about this, you can always leave it in the comments or you can reach out to our team at Goulet Pens. I definitely recommend you check out GouletPens.com to see fountain pens, ink, paper, and other stuff that we have related to fountain pens on our site. And if you like this video and you want 2000 plus more like it and we're putting out more all the time, definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out the other ones that we already have. Thanks so much for spending time with me today. Appreciate it and right on.